Hey everybody, welcome to the channel and welcome to Celebrate Sausage. I hope you're having a great day. My name is Eric and I'm glad you could join us because today we're going to be doing something a little differently. We're going to be talking about how to keep your grinder plate and your grinder knife sharp at all times. Over time, as you grind meat, your plate and your knife will become less efficient. And instead of producing a very clean cut, what ends up happening is as the meat is getting pushed through the auger and that knife goes to cut it, it's dull, therefore it rips into the meat or tears into the meat. And this can smear the fat, which inevitably will lead to a grainy uh, sausage with a very poor quality texture. Nobody wants that. And so in today's video, I'm gonna show you a technique where you can keep your grinder plates and knives perfectly sharp, just like the day you bought them. I'm not even kidding. It doesn't matter the size. It doesn't matter the shape. It doesn't matter the manufacturer. This works with all plates, all knives, and you could do this anywhere in the world. The technique is pretty specific, so be sure to follow along to the very end of this video. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. I can guarantee you that if you follow this technique at home, you will end up with a set of plates and grinder knives that will grind your meat beautifully. I'm talking perfectly sharp. And speaking of sharp, today's sponsor has something to say about that. Jinda Industries was kind enough to sponsor today's video and I'm going to put a link to their website in the description box below. Jinda Industries is a leading manufacturer of supplies and equipment that are designed to keep your knives and tools sharp. They sell everything from whetstones to guided sharpening systems. They carry some of the classiest, most well-built knife rolls that I've ever seen and they have a huge selection of different knives that are incredibly unique, some of which you've seen on this channel. So if you have knives like I do, they're eventually gonna need to be sharpened. And instead of outsourcing the sharpening, Jinda Industries makes it possible with the products that they sell for you to sharpen your knives at home and achieve professional level results. I mean, can you even imagine a world in which all of your knives are razor sharp? I can. Jinda Industries has been kind enough to extend a discount code for those of you watching Celebrate Sausage. You can find it in the description box below. If you have any questions, give them a call. They have extraordinary customer service. Thank you, Jinda, for sponsoring this video. Let's get into it. Okay, let me show you the technique. Here's what we're gonna be sharpening today. This is our grinder knife. This is the blade. And here's a couple different style of plates. One's a number 12, the other one's a number 22. But like I said in the beginning, it does not matter. You can literally sharpen any plate and any knife using this particular method. Let me show you what we're gonna need to make that happen. First thing we're gonna need is a little bit of water. And so I just got a ramekin of water. We don't need a lot. We're gonna set that to the side. Next, we're gonna need a couple sheets of sandpaper. We've got two different grits. One is more coarse than the other. And so the coarsest grit I have is an 80, and then we have a 180, and both of these are wet or dry, and that's important. You wanna be able to uh, put a little bit of water on the sandpaper. And then finally, we're gonna need a smooth, flat surface. And unfortunately, wood does not make a good, smooth, flat surface. So we're gonna be using a lapping plate from Jinda Industries. This lapping plate is made out of float glass. It's a half an inch thick, and it's designed to maintain your sharpening stones. One side of it is etched, and the other side is smooth. And this is the side we're gonna use to sharpen our grinder blade and our grinder plates. All we're gonna do here is cut our sandpaper to fit onto that plate, and then we'll get started. And I just wanna say that it is absolutely critically important that you make sure that whatever surface you're doing this on is perfectly flat. If it's not flat, what you'll end up doing is resurfacing your plate and your blade unevenly, and you're not gonna get the results that you're looking for. Matter of fact, you could make it worse. So make sure your surface is perfectly flat, and if you're not sure and you don't wanna risk it, I'm gonna put a link to this lapping plate, the one we use, in the description box below. That way you know without a shadow of a doubt you're gonna be doing it right. So here's our sandpaper. We have our two grits, and they're now ready to go. So let's just go ahead and set that to the side and take a look at what we're gonna be sharpening. I'm gonna show you a couple different examples and I think I'm gonna start with a number 12 grinding plate. This is a six millimeter grinding plate. If you've been keeping up with the series, you'll know I love the six millimeter grind and this particular plate can certainly use a little touch up. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna grab a permanent marker and draw a bunch of cross patterns on the face of this grinding plate. As we resurface this grinding plate, those lines will slowly begin to disappear and once they are completely gone, 
our plate has been resurfaced. And so this is kind of more of an indicator to let us know that uh, everything is flat and then we can move on to the next step. So I've got lines all over the place and that's exactly what you want it to look like. And now we're gonna go ahead and get our coarsest grit sandpaper on the plate. So this is the 80 grit, that's the coarsest one we have. And I'm gonna put a little bit of water directly on top of that sandpaper because I find that when it's wet, it tends to cut a little more efficiently. So we're just gonna wet that a little bit and now it's time to start the process. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take the side that has the permanent markers and face that down and we're gonna make the notch that's on the plate face the 12 o'clock position or completely forward. So that's exactly what it's gonna look like. Now place your hand on the plate and with even pressure, run that plate forward and back 10 times. Once finished, rotate that notch to where it's pointing in the one o'clock position. Should we, we just wanna turn it a little bit to the right, nothing dramatic. And we're gonna do the same thing, forward and back 10 times. Now that that's finished, we're gonna bring it back to the original position. So the notch will be at the 12 o'clock position and we're gonna do it 10 times, forward and back, even pressure. Once we're done with that, we're gonna rotate that plate 180 degrees. So the notch that was at the top is now at the bottom, just like that. And we're gonna repeat the same process, forward and back 10 times, even pressure. Once you're done with that, rotate the plate to the right like we did earlier, 10 more times, forward and back, even pressure. And then once you're finished with that, bring it back to the original position, 10 more times, forward and back, even pressure. So we've done this a total of six times and this is what the bottom half of our plate looks like. And what we're looking for is any remaining uh, permanent marker marks. If there are any permanent marker marks remaining, repeat the process. If there are none, you can move on to the next step. And as you can see, there is clearly a visible difference between <laughs> the side that we just finished and the other side. All right, so now it's time to do the opposite side. We're literally just gonna flip the plate over and repeat the process. So the first thing to do is grab a permanent marker and mark up the entire face of that plate. We just wanna make a bunch of different cross lines so that we know where we stand at the end of this process. At this point, we're gonna do exactly what we did earlier, starting with the notch in the 12 o'clock position, 10 strokes forward and back, even pressure. We're gonna rotate it to the one o'clock position. So just a little twist to the right, just like that. 10 more strokes, forward and back, even pressure. And then we're gonna rotate the plate back to the 12 o'clock position. 10 more strokes, forward and back, even pressure. Now at this point, we're gonna rotate that plate 180 degrees around, and we're gonna do the exact same thing again. 10 strokes, forward and back, even pressure. Just like that. We're gonna rotate it to the right a little bit. 10 strokes, forward and back, even pressure. And then we're gonna rotate it back to the 12 o'clock position. 10 strokes, forward and back, even pressure. So let's flip the plate over and see if there are any permanent marker lines that remain. If there are not, we can move on to the next step. If there are, we need to repeat this entire process. And it looks like we have no permanent marker lines remaining. So we're good to move on as this plate has now been resurfaced with the 80 grit paper. It's now time to switch to a higher grit sandpaper and repeat the process for both sides. Depending on how well you maintenance your plates, you may only need to do this process with one of the grits. I generally only use the 180 grit, but I tend to maintenance mine pretty regularly. So if yours are in relatively bad condition, or if this is the first time that you're doing them, you're probably gonna wanna use the 80 grit sandpaper and then the 180 grit sandpaper, and that's gonna get everything nice and tidy. Moving forward, you could determine whether or not you wanna use one sandpaper or two sandpapers when you sharpen uh, for the next time. But for the first time, I suggest using two different grits, and it looks like this side is done, so let's flip the plate over and repeat the process. And there you have it. This plate is completely resurfaced. It's perfectly flat, perfectly smooth. We've uh, repeated the process six times on each side with two different grits and it's now ready to go. So let me show you a different example. This particular grinding plate is from a number 22 grinder. It's several years old. It's uh, got a lot more wear and tear on it. You can definitely see on the plate itself that there's some deep scratches in it. 
and resurfacing is about cleaning that up to where it's completely flat. So we're gonna basically do the exact same thing on the number 80 uh, sandpaper. Now, I'm not gonna take you through the whole sharpening process. I'm just gonna do one little side so that you could see what uh, a difference this actually makes. So we're just gonna blast through this right quick and then I'll show you the end results. And like I said earlier, it doesn't matter what kind of plate you have, what kind of blade you have. You could do this with all makes, all models. Just make sure that you're on a perfectly flat surface. This is the end result of the resurfacing. So let's take a look at the old side. That's this side right here. You got all those grooves, a lot of scratch, you know, scratches on the top right there. Uh, and the other side looked exactly like it. And so when we flip it over, here's what the new side looks like. Look at that. Completely resurfaced. I mean, there's one tiny little bitty area where I could probably go maybe another two or three passes and that'll completely clean that up. But that is just like new, ready to go again. That's gonna cut like a champ. All right, so let's put that to the side. Let me show you how to do the knife portion of your grinder equipment. This is equally important and we're gonna do it the exact same way. Now remember, we're not technically sharpening, we're more flattening or resurfacing. In order for your grinder to grind most efficiently, the knife portion needs to meet up perfectly flat with the plate portion. And that's how it operates. It cuts like a paper cutter. And this process makes that happen. So we're gonna add a little bit of water to the number 80 grit sandpaper, and we're gonna repeat the exact same process. Notice how my blade is set, and if you wanna make a little line to indicate how you have your blade, you could do that as well. But I'm just gonna go 10 strokes, even pressure, nice and easy, forward and back. I'm now gonna rotate that blade to the right, just a fraction, 10 more strokes, forward and back, even pressure, and then we're gonna rotate it left back to the original position, just like that. 10 strokes, forward and back, even pressure. At this point, just like before, we're gonna rotate that blade 180 degrees, so it's now facing the opposite direction, and we're gonna do the exact same thing. 10 strokes forward and back, even pressure, a little slight rotation to the right, 10 strokes forward and back, even pressure, and then a little slight rotation to the original position, 10 strokes forward and back, even pressure. And there we have it. Our knife has been resurfaced on the 80 grit sandpaper. And if this is the first time that you're doing this, I would suggest doing this process again on the 180 grit sandpaper, which is gonna help smooth that surface out even more. It's gonna give you a better cut. And then moving forward, if you maintain your knife in plate regularly, you only have to use the 180 grit paper. So we're just gonna blast through the progression. This is now the 180 grit paper. We're gonna repeat the exact same process and then I'm gonna show you the end result. And depending on how much meat you grind and how well you take care of your equipment, sharpening your plate and your knife with this method will not only save you hundreds of dollars on having to buy you know, replacement blades and plates, but it's immediately gonna make the quality of your grind exponentially better. And so this is what our blade looks like now. It's gone through the 80 grit and the 180 grit. And now that we're finished, let me demonstrate what this should look like. So we have our plate we just finished and there is our knife. They should fit perfectly flat together. And if I were to stick a little flimsy piece of paper inside one of those holes, we should get a very clean, very crisp cut when that blade runs across it. Boop, just like that. Let me do it one more time. Uh, there we go, it's just a single piece of paper, and here it comes, beep, just like that. And that's how we restored our knife and plate back to a new condition, and basically it's about resurfacing the face on both of those. And so we want that knife to fit perfectly flat against the plate, resurfacing allows that to happen so that when the knife begins to turn, it cuts the meat instead of tears or rips through the meat, which is gonna give you a much cleaner grind. The only thing that you need to pay special attention to, and I don't think I can emphasize this enough, is that you need to make sure that the surface you're working on is perfectly flat. If it's not perfectly flat, you're not gonna get the same results. In this video, we used a lapping plate from Jinda Industries. Now, under normal circumstances, this particular lapping plate is used to level our whetstones, which we use to keep our knives sharp. That's the etched side. But the opposite side is a reference plate. It's completely smooth and perfectly flat, and it guarantees a flat surface no matter where you're at. So I'm gonna put a link in the description box below if you wanna check this out, get one for yourself, or just read more about it. And uh, thanks for watching this video. If you have any questions, 
about this particular process, leave them in the comment section below. If you found this video helpful or entertaining in any way, a great big thumbs up is always appreciated. And if this is the first video that you've seen from our channel, take a moment, click that subscribe button and that notification bell so you can be notified of every one of our uploads. We appreciate you being here. Thank you, Jinda Industry, for the discount code and for sponsoring this video. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.